Dear Diary, this is part six, and hopefully the final di uh, piece of my die, <laughs> my die chest of Trachtenberg's GLCXP to try and murder him. Um, they had visited me in Rikers in 2006. They knew how Rikers starved me and deprived me of sleep and did all kinds of things to kill you by natural causes. They also knew that I wanted to commit suicide. They were hoping one of the two would happen so my body would never rise to the surface of the lake where they dumped it. Hide the body. As long as I'm alive... That's why I can't get too much into this. If I was going out every day telling people what the Tragnumers did, the Tragnumers would find more and more people turning against them. They would then say, we have to silence Christopher to save our own lives and careers. You see how it works? It's pretty simple. There's a reason why there's not many investigative reporters out there. Because you are risking everything to expose the crimes of dangerous, unethical people. Um, so, oh, we were talking about the charges, because still nobody seems to know what happened to me. They just see things in the New York Times. He was convicted of harassing 19-year-old um, actress model Rachel Trachtenberg. Um, pretty misleading. But um, when do facts matter to the media? Um, it's all political. Um, so, you, you follow me, it's three crimes. They arrested me five months after the crime, and I had been sitting in their court, I mean in their jail, for four of those, the last four of those five months, <laughs> not charged with the crime. Because what they were trying to do is they were holding me on other crimes. Now you can, when, in America, when you arrest somebody, and you don't allow them out on bail, or you set bail they can't pay, which is illegal, you can only hold them for a certain period of time called this right to speedy trial, etc., etc. You, you can't hold somebody in jail for five years in America before taking them to trial. It's insanely illegal. We have speedy trial laws. And there's certain rules. Like in New York State, on a, on a B misdemeanor, you can't hold me for more than 15 days, no matter what. But they didn't obey it. On an A misdemeanor, you're not supposed to detain somebody without conviction for more than 30 days. But they held me for months. And they kept saying, all right, we're, we're wearing thin here. I mean, at some point, even the crooked judges are going to go, all right, what the fuck are you guys doing? You're holding this guy for months and months and months and months and months on petty A misdemeanors or B misdemeanors? What the fuck is going on here? Even dirty judges are going to be like, this is, you're going too far. We're all going to look really bad. You can't, you don't commit crimes this brazenly without looking very, very bad. It's going to come back to haunt you big time. It's going to blow up in your face. So they had to parcel out. So they're like, we need another excuse to keep him in jail. He can't get out because he, will go, he said he's going to try and stop us in the next election. And he has some really good plans he's already told us about, which will work. So we need to keep him in jail by hook, crook, or whatever. So that's why five months after I was, allegedly after the crime, then they came up with the, let's use the fake Rachel thing. They didn't give the Trachtenbergs the time of day for two years. But then when they needed them, then the DEA was like, if we create a case of the Rachel, the whole fake Rachel track number case, we can start the clock all over again. We arrest CXB, now we can hold them for, you know, no, we're not supposed to hold them for three days, we can hold them for a few months and fake it. And we can use a 730 psychedel to buy us another month or two here and there. They have all the dirty tricks, they use them every day. Every day of every week of every year. Um, prosecutors have always been corrupt. Ask the Salem witches. Ask Galileo. As Socrates, a prosecutor is a word for a criminal, and we need to grow up as a society and start to admit that. Um, six minutes. So, where was I going with this? Um, six charges. I wasn't charged with even reaching out to Rachel. Uh, oh, just to let you know, technically... Uh, even though technically they say, I mean, and they had the proof, so I don't, I don't doubt that those three mass emails did end up in Rachel's inbox. But that still doesn't violate the law, if you see the way the law is written. I, and I blew apart everything they said. I'll give you an example. Now, they were charging me double harassment for each of these three mass emails, which are innocuous emails. There's no death threats. Remember, in the past they'd say, oh, he, he called City Hall thousands of times. It was false, but every idiot believed it. And it sounded good. Or they'd say, he threatened the mayor's life or his, his lawyer's life. And they'd distort everything and make it look good. And every idiot believed it. But here they're like, shit, there's nothing like a threat. There's no quantity here. There's no quantity. This isn't, this isn't even dozens. This is 
three mass emails to his readers. We have a real First Amendment problem here. We need to cheat every fucking way we possibly can and get some kind of conviction on this guy, this motherfucker who's making us look like a bunch of fucking criminals and exposing our protecting pedophiles and everything else, which came out in the summer of 2012 anyhow. Suckers, ha ha, I was vindicated about all of it. Um, everything. I was vindicated on everything. Even the statute used against me. I, I, test, I, I gave a speech to the judge making a motion to dismiss because the statute is unconstitutional on its face. He laughed at me. Uh, two years later, the New York Court of Appeals said the statute is completely uh, unconstitutional on its face. Um, the guy handling the appeal of the Rachel Trackenberg case is not the most intelligent dude in town. But I don't, I'm not rich. I can't hire good lawyers. So I'm fuck out of luck. And I don't expect the uh, appeal to work because he has conflicts of interest. It's, but I, I have no choices. I'm a beggar. A beggar cannot be choosy. So I'm in the mercy of a fucking idiot and all these lawyers are idiots they don't know anything about law people don't people forget that I, I'm not going to go into details on that right now DAs don't know anything about the law literally judges literally don't know anything about the law because it's not in their job duties 95% of arrests in America end in plea deals the DA puts you in jail or makes you take off enough time from work where you decide to cry uncle even though you're innocent and wanted to fight after sitting in jail for six months waiting for your right to trial and they stall your right to trial and they stall your right to trial 95% of people and almost every innocent person pleads guilty to something to get the fuck out of jail to not have to come off court every day uh, every month and take time off from work and lose money the DA the DAs and judges never deal with law this is all they do they put you in jail with an excessive bail they torture you until you plead guilty this is what a judge knows about law Mr. Smith are you pleading guilty of your own volition that's all they do every day it's plea deals there's no there's no discussion of laws or anything. It's all the same shit over and over again every day. It's a factory. I know a lot about the laws. Um, here's one example. So now, each of these three mass emails, mass email one, for instance, let's take mass email three, short one-page email making fun of Julia's hairdo and their new band. I'm charged with a year, I'm facing a year in jail for harassment because they say it harasses Rachel. And a year in jail because it's contempt of court because I sent it to her and she had an order of protection. Never mind the order of protection was illegal and illegally obtained. None of that matters, they say. All of it's fake, but none of that matters, they say. Okay. Well, after the DA makes their entire case and Rachel testifies and she flip-flops and I get her to even testify that I did not harass her, did not harass her, did not harass her, um, the DA kept going, oh shit, two minutes left. Fuck. Oh, no. See, there's no way to diarize the zillions of factoids. Um, just the torture in Rikers is going to be fucking 65 hours of fucking diaries. This is impossible. Um, even an audio diary. Even though I digress, I admit. Um, shit, two minutes. Here's an example. I gave a great speech to the judge after the DA rested their case. And it was my time for defense. Before I even began my defense case, I said, Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to dismiss on facial insufficiency. I said, the DA says... These emails are not free speech. Now, we all agree free speech is very well settled in America by the Supreme Court, etc. There's no mystery, no ambiguity. It is almost impossible to limit free speech in America, except under certain circumstances. Harassment is only legal in two categories, if it's speech-based. One, it either has to be a direct death threat. Very direct, says the Supreme Court. It can't be just, I'm going to get you, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to fucking come over and beat the shit out of you. Nope, it has to be a direct and clear death threat, says the Supreme Court. Everyone agreed, that doesn't fit here, Your Honor. So that only leaves the quantity standard. A 500 messages to your girl, or phone calls to your ex-girlfriend, going, please, I love you, take me back. It's a lovely message, but it's harassment because of the quantity. I don't have any objections to that. I agree, those messages aren't free speech. You're harassing the person with quantity. It must serve a legitimate purpose. Um, that doesn't apply here either, Your Honor. I'm charged with, I'm facing two years for one single email. I'm facing another two years for another single email. One act. It doesn't meet the quantity standard even remotely. Game over. On its face, it doesn't meet the statute. Facial insufficiency. And I gave a much bigger speech than that. But when I was done, and I was really good, the judge said, Mr. Brodeur made some very good arguments in there. How is this not like a double jeopardy here? You're charging him for the email going to her and you're charging her with the con him with the content. And then the DA gave the rebuttal. It was hilarious. He said, we're not charging with the content. And we're not charging him with the quantity. The only two standards that apply to the statute that I harassed her. Instead, they came up with something none of us have ever heard before. They said, well, the fact that he sent it to her and she got it is harassment. 
doesn't matter what it said. And the judge said, and I said, Your Honor, that's insane. That's the contempt charge that I sent the email to her. That's the contempt charge, not the harassment charge. Two different charges. I'm arguing that the harass charge, not the contempt charge, I'm not saying the contempt charge is facially insufficient. I'm saying the harassment charges don't fit because it's free speech. And even they admit it's free speech. And he said, Mr. Perdue is right. It doesn't make any sense what you're saying. Try again. So they just repeat the same argument they had made a minute before.